Good afternoon. My name is Yanhee Jenny Kang, and I have no idea where I'm from. Where are you from? It's a question that's bound to come up in introductions. When you first meet someone, you say something along the lines of, hello, Jenny, it's nice to meet you. Where are you from? Now, although this question used to be fairly easy to answer in the past when there was less mobility, today we live in a globalized world where change is the only constant and where this question becomes increasingly difficult to answer for more and more people. I am one of those people. I could respond by saying that I was born in Seoul, South Korea, or I could tell you that I grew up in various US states, or I could tell you that Spain is now my home. But there is an internal confusion of identity there. My passport tells me that I'm South Korean, but that's not who I am. Sometimes I feel like I embody the cultures of the United States and Spain more than that of Korea. So where is home for me? Where am I from? I guess I just have to say that I'm kind of culturally homeless. But while I can't tell you where I'm from, I can tell you what I am. I am a third culture kid. Before I talk about third culture children, I want to look at the word culture itself. There are many definitions of culture, but I define culture as something that is both shared and lived. It's a set of experiences, identities, and beliefs that are shared by a group of people. It's basically a set of concepts and ideals that serves to shape our everyday behavior. So what then is a third culture kid? St. Louis University Madrid is the home to 806 students. 806 students that represent 67 different nationalities and speak over 50 languages. As you can imagine, many of them are third culture kids and some of them are pictured, including me, in this photo behind me. Third culture kids are those individuals who have spent the majority of their developmental years outside of their parents' culture. They are those individuals that embody their parents' culture, the culture in which they reside in, which sometimes can be more than one, and a third culture, which is an amalgamation of the two. In my case, this thirdness would consist of the cultures of Spain, the United States, and Korea. As third culture children, we build relationships with all of the cultures that we assimilate to, and yet we simultaneously lack full identification or belonging to any one of them. We are independent, we're cosmopolitan, but we have a serious issue with our identity formation. We have a lot of troubles finding out who we are and really having a solid sense of self or a oneness to any one culture or place. So how do these individuals come to be? My parents were just an average married couple who decided to emigrate to the United States in the 1990s. They were not missionaries, nor were they part of the military, nor were they diplomats. They just wanted to give their daughter, me, an opportunity at an education in English, a language that they believed would be beneficial for me when I grew older. Now, what they definitely did not plan on was me moving around so much in the United States with them due to their jobs, moving back to Korea to finish my high school education, and ending up moving to Spain, where I earned two bachelor's degrees in Spanish and psychology. All of this culminated in me completely losing myself. I had no idea where I was from, and I had no idea who I was. Now, you can see the problem with identity formation because I'm going to go back to the definition of a third culture kid. I specified developmental years as being the primary focal point of the definition itself. This coincidentally happens to be the same time in our lives when individuals get a pretty clear grasp of who they are. They solidify their identity psychologically. So for third culture kids, if we're busy moving around all the time, how can we possibly know who we are? And if we don't have a solid sense of identity, how can we belong anywhere? Who am I? When I have been exposed to all of these different places, cultures, and people, which one of them am I? As third culture kids, our identity development is set aside because we have a more pressing issue, the need to be able to adapt to all of the places that we're exposed to. Who was I as a child in the United States? I was a foreigner. And by a foreigner, I mean I didn't look like them, nor did I think like them. When I went back to Korea, who was I? I was a hidden immigrant of sorts. I looked like them, but I didn't think like them due to the fact that I embodied both the American and Korean identities. And when I moved here to Spain, who am I now? 
I am a foreigner all over again. I do not look like them, nor do I think like them, because now I have a thirdness, that amalgamation of the three cultures that I mentioned before. I have no idea who I am. Basically, I'm a foreigner everywhere. I'm not fully accepted by any place or any culture. This is something that I like to call cultural loneliness. It's belonging everywhere, but nowhere all at once. It's because you embody a culture thirdness that is distinctly your own and you feel isolated as a result of it. Just as being hungry is associated with the need to eat, feeling lonely is associated with the need to belong. Naturally, humans are very social creatures. Evolutionarily, being social was favored because being in tribes and packs meant that your increased chances of survival were very favorable. favorable. But now, while there are no woolly mammoths running around to encourage us to socialize with each other, today we just do it because it feels nice to be accepted and to belong. So for us third culture kids then, cultural loneliness stems from a sense of lacking belonging. We feel like we're left out. We don't sense a oneness with any culture or place. We feel like we're misunderstood and we're not completely understood by anyone. We don't really fit in in anywhere. If you think about it, it makes sense. In ancient Rome, exile was a punishment designed to punish you by stripping you of your roots. It effectively displaced, displaced you from your culture and from your people and made sure that you never had a home again. Cicero, the famous Roman philosopher and politician, was temporarily placed in exile. And during his time, he wrote a myriad of letters to his friends and family. He said that because of the exile, he had fallen into a very deep depression. He felt like he had nothing left to live for, that he was shattered and that he was broken. As third culture kids, we can always feel slightly exiled in a sense that we don't feel like we fit in anywhere. Now, let me explain what this term is. Cultural code switching. Code switching by itself in the field of linguistics is when a speaker alternates between two or more languages within one single conversation. Spanglish is a great example of this and I use it all of the time. My friends on this campus and I, when I speak, it kind of slips our minds. We say something like, a que hora te vas a your house? Or when are you going to casa? It just slips out of us. And what cultural code switching is, is when speakers code switch not just languages, but their cultural identities and behaviors as well. Let me give you an example. My parents are Korean, and when I speak to them, sometimes I mix Korean and English. When I speak to them in Korean, I express a more demure, soft-spoken and respectful, more polite manner than when I speak in English with them. I'm much more straightforward, I'm slightly more aggressive, and I'm definitely more assertive. This all happens in the same conversation. So this kind of made me think, is it because I'm switching languages or is it because I'm switching my identity? Well, I think those two are the exact same thing. Languages can't be separated from what we perceive, think, and feel. So what happens is these dual selves start to come out. Myself in English, myself in Spanish, myself in Korean. And when I switch languages, what happens is this, cultural code switching. My cultural identity and my behaviors change as well. So why do we do this? I think that for third culture kids, we want to rid ourselves of otherness. And by otherness, I mean anything that's foreign to you. Humans want to avoid otherness. They don't like anything that's out of their comfort zones, anything that they don't relate to. This goes back to our needs to belong and to be accepted. It's natural for us to avoid something that we're not familiar with. This is why we, call, we code switch culturally, because we want to be able to communicate with someone, to identify that speaker, and communicate with them without them feeling like we're different from them. How else does language affect us? Language affects how we think, how we feel, how we perceive things. It's very complicated for third culture kids because many of us speak more than two languages. Now, language is interesting because grammar can shape how we think as well. Let's take Japanese for an example. In the Japanese language, there exists a passive form for causality. What that means is that the speaker, which would commit an action purposefully in English, is caused to take the same action in Japanese. So let's say, for example, you have an older sister, and she's very particular about her things. You go into her room when she's not home to look for something, and in the meanwhile, you break her favorite possession. What would you say in English? If my older sister finds out, I don't know what she'll do to me. She's going to do something to me. 
I know that she's going to do it, it's going to be to me, and it's not going to be good. But what would the sentence look like if we formatted it with Japanese grammar? If my older sister finds out, I don't know what will be done to me. Something will be done to me. I still have no idea what it is, and probably my older sister is going to do it to me. But in this sentence structure, what's different is that she's caused to take the action, making her not responsible for the act nor the outcome. This can possibly explain why in the field of psychology, which is what I study here in St. Louis, many psychologists might cite Japanese individuals as having an external attribution of responsibility. And this holds many clinical impl implications for us. It tells us what we can and can't do, what we should and shouldn't do, and what kind of treatments will and won't work with those kind of patients. Honorifics is another part of grammar that I want to talk about. Honorifics are huge in Japanese and Korean languages. Now, honorifics also exist in Spanish. Just as in Korean, we have a different way of conjugating verbs to express respect. In Spanish, we have the usted form of conjugation. The difference between Spanish and Korean is that in Korean, there is a specific set of verbs, nouns, and conjugations that you reserve for people who are in a higher position than you or who are older than you but in many times in Korean culture it equates to being the exact same thing. This might explain why Japanese and Korean societies have such a high preoccupation for hierarchy because maybe our grammar changes the way we think and perceive things and that's why we put such a strong emphasis on it. Now, I know I made it sound like being a third culture kid is absolutely horrible. I mean, what did our parents do to us? I'm lost in the world, I have no home, I don't even know who I am. What did my parents do to me? I definitely did not sign up for any of this. But I guarantee you that there are benefits that come with growing as a third culture kid. Some of the benefits are competence. Third cultured individuals are very competent. We survive and thrive pretty much anywhere we go. Although we can't fully adjust and assimilate to one single culture and ground ourselves in it, we can still get along pretty well. Well enough that we're pretty accepted socially. We're competent socially, we're competent culturally, and we're great at picking up on social cues and signals without being, have, without being told to do so. Another benefit is broader perspective. Because we've been ex so exposed to different thoughts, different languages, different cultures, different people, we're accustomed to looking at situations from more than one manner. So we're great at looking at things from a different perspective. This helps us to be much more empathetic and understanding of different cultures, of different people, and of different ideas. We're much more open-minded at times. Why does any of this matter for all of you who aren't third culture kids? Well, Although third culture kids and non-third culture kids may not be able to understand each other fully, the important thing is that we can learn from each other. Differences make room for dialogue and discussion, and from dialogue and discussion, we can learn how to better communicate with each other and understand each other. It's time to get rid of those antiquated cookie-cutter concepts of an individual being from one single place or culture. We shouldn't ask each other where we're from. We should ask each other who we are. Who am I? I am Yeonhee Jenny Kang. I am me, and I am not defined by where I'm from. Thank you. <laughs>